Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. So we're going to dive into a big conversation that we've been, uh, Mama Jay and I have been dealing with, and it's uh, overcoming doubt and unbelief. So as we go into this conversation once again, we're going to ask Bradley Rapier to bring one of his, well, his life experiences so he can bring uh, some color to this whole conversation. Bradley, welcome to the Epic Conquerors. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love what you guys are all about. And uh, yeah, great to be here. So Mama Jay, as we dive right in, you and Bradley obviously have met before. So um, I'm going to let you just kick that right off. Okay. I was just so in love with Bradley as soon as I met him back in May uh, at a conference that we were both at. And so I just kind of stalked him a little bit <laughs> and kept coming around the corner and say, hey, Bradley, until he finally noticed, you know. And then we saw each other again at the Lance Wall Now thing, a uh, conference that he had. And we had a lot more chance to talk there. But I just love what he's doing. I love what his story is. I love how he's inspiring and helping people. And so I said, you've got to be a guest on our Epic Conquerors podcast. And he said, love to. So here we are. Yes. So, Bradley, why don't you go ahead and share a little bit about yourself so our audience can get to know exactly who Bradley is and what Bradley's doing and the amazing things that you're doing in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what might be helpful, I'll just briefly go back and give a little bit of backstory to how things happen. And um, so I grew up in Canada. That's where I'm from. And uh, and at, at a time when I was there, I was uh, going a certain path, um, following a certain path, following my father's footsteps, uh, professional, uh, he was a doctor. And I remember at a certain point in my life when I wasn't connected to that and I didn't understand why fully, but I knew that I just was not, it wasn't fulfilling me. I didn't know why exactly. And when I grew up in Canada there, I was very active as a kid. I did a lot of stuff and I had an incredible life. I had a uh, you know, we lived on this beautiful man-made lake. I had swimming in the summer and skating in the winter. I lived, I lived within an hour's drive of the incredible ski slopes of the Canadian Rockies. I had a huge playground. It was amazing, and I played hard. But a lot of that was masking some fear I had. Um, you see, I was the youngest in my family, and at that time, I saw like this intense anger and frustration of my older siblings kind of creeping in, um, and it was kind of resulted in some just – unpredictable outbursts. And so as the youngest, I was pretty scared, pretty stressed as a kid. Um, they were great siblings, but there was just things happening that were not great. And as the youngest, the weird thing was, it was, I was watching the destruction of the life that I loved. And I felt this responsibility to kind of hold it together. And I was, through my life, started to do this pattern of just keeping busy and distracting people to try and diffuse situations and that's what I thought I knew. That's all I needed to do. But eventually it didn't work. My, my mother one night at dinner told us she's leaving my father. They got a divorce. Well, not only did our family like implode, but my stability was kind of gone. And I, the promise of what I thought the rapiers just sort of disappeared. And I went back to what I knew. I went back to just distracting people, being the fun younger brother, and, and just trying to do what I could to be the good son in a sense. But as I transitioned to university, there became this growing disconnect between these moves I kept making to try and keep things together, keep my family happy, keep my friends around, keep my, my future secured. Takes a lot and of I work just, to do all that, doesn't it, Bradley? <laughs> it, it does. And, I, and I, knew, I knew how to do certain things. I knew how to study hard. I knew how to be a good kid. I knew how to you know, front, run fast for the sports teams. But I noticed that all these in-between moments and the, the quiet times in my life, I was just getting filled with anxiety. I was uh, getting weary from that, that weight, and there was a disconnect between what I'd been doing and what my, what, what basically what my soul was screaming for. And as um, I shared with Judy before, when I, then one day when I was at university, this guy, this tall, lanky dude, comes to me, and I knew him from high school, but on the campus, and he, goes, I, and he starts to show me a brand new art form, and it was called street dance. It was brand new at that time. And he starts to pop his muscles and he starts to throw these words to his body. And, I mean, my hair shot straight up. I got this hairdo free from him. And um, it stayed that way. And I just, in that moment, there was this thing of clarity where I, 
I can't describe it, but I sent something behind what he was doing that really connected with me. And I went, I had it all wrong. I'd been so focused on moves. And I, I was to, had all those moves in my mind. And when I saw that it was much more than that. So then I went from there and I knew I wasn't going to follow my dad's footsteps. I let him know, dad, I'm, I, I can't do it. I left everything I knew in Canada and I went to the States. And when I got to Los Angeles, um, there's a lot that happened to get there. But in a nutshell, I was searching for family. I was searching for connection and I was chasing this thing that was behind this art form that I loved. So I started this weekly gathering and it grew into this movement. Um, and it really became a pivotal thing in Los Angeles. And then it created this group called the Groovaloos that I formed. And before I knew it, we, let's say that more yeah, clearly so our audience can oh, catch it. Oh yeah. The, the Groovaloos. And this actually it's our 20th anniversary this year. Awesome. And, and in 20th anniversary and, before I knew it, we were, we were the first group to ever perform as a featured group on So You Think You Can Dance. We were the first group on the Wayne Brady Show. We were on uh, Dance with the Stars, and we did Superstars of Dance and all sorts of performances. Um, and all the way through that, I was surrounded by this, this culture, this freestyle hip-hop culture, uh, predominantly. I love all dance. I've worked with all dance, but it's predominantly that. And there was this idea of, of freedom there that I saw this pattern in it, even as I went on beyond that and choreographed and worked in New York and different Broadway and different places, that in the hip hop culture, there was this thing and I saw it, I put it in this phrase and I remembered it from when I saw my friend dance in high school. It's not the move, it's the groove. It's not the move, it's the groove. That when you live your life, as I was living and trying to deal with all that stuff in my past and my life by moves, like trying to do this for that and this for that, you run out of moves. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot move. I love that. You run out of moves. <laughs> run out of moves. Or, or if you would attempt to try to memorize all the moves required to get through a thing, you exhaust yourself. You're burned Mentally out. Mentally exhausting. Stage. Yeah. Exhausting. And so I, I put it in this phrase, and it's, it's symbolic to how I feel, my, what I believe in my life, but I put it in a sort of a, a terminology to connect to people to say, it's not the moves, the groove, until you connect to that larger, endless, groove a groove that was rolled up from the beginning of time with multiple expressions unique to each of us when you connect to that groove you can dance through life all day and and that that realization changed my life it, it brought me to Bradley, new levels of- yes. i want you to say that again because that is very powerful because yes people need to hear that whole statement right there again can you absolutely it? yeah so I, I say that this groove this mm-hmm. this this endless groove that was rolled out from the beginning of time with multiple expressions unique to each one of us, speaking to us at all times through various ways, sound, light, color, vibration, creation, uh, d- different ways that are connecting to our core, that are speaking to who we are, if we are aware of that. When you connect to that group, you can dance through life all day. And, and that, that brought me to new levels of truth and identity that I could not have imagined because transferred it to how I was learning it through this hip-hop dance culture in that culture you cannot survive as a copy uh it's very much if you if you see hip-hop and that it, it, the word's big now but in the essence of it you get in these ciphers and these places and these sort of sort of exchanges you can't go in there to tell copy someone else you're forced very quickly to learn okay who am i how do i move how do i pop lock break freestyle whatever how do i do it and that's what you have to be very authentic right yeah, and you initially you maybe don't know that. I mean, actually, it's funny uh, in terms of the topic of uh, people feeling uh, needing to be get past self doubts and and overcoming. I remember when I battled that. You know, I talk about moves and grooves, obviously. And when I say move, I'm talking about things that are it's uh, temporary, uh, limited. They still have value. Like your status is a move. Your personality is a move. Your letters behind your name is a move. But like a move mindset has you so focused on what you want to what I want to say right now I'm so focused on what I want to say that I forget that maybe there's something else you guys want to talk about or that you maybe have a problem I'm not listening to because I'm just on my move mindset I got to get this done or I want to meet somebody and I'm like okay if I just meet Judy if I just meet Judy and I get so overwhelmed I make what I call I make a mountain out of a move 
that now I'm going to meet you is that, that I made it a mountain. So now when I meet you, I can't even speak right. I trip. I <laughs> in. A mountain out of a move. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And good. because when you realize the groove, then you know you're going here. You're going somewhere far. These moves are along the way. They are not the thing. Um, and so it, it really has been uh, in my life something that has really brought me to a, a place that I understand and see how people gravitate to that. It's really an interesting point that you made there about your definition of what a move is because we can get so wrapped up in trying to do everything just right and to, you know, do it in the way that's to learn behavior and so on that we really don't allow ourselves that freedom to go, like you say, in the groove. Uh, just last yeah. night I was ministering at a Bible study group and I had prepared a couple of hours, my message and everything. I was ready to go for it. And as soon as I stood up, like the Holy Spirit said, no, there's healing in this place. And two thirds of the people needed miraculous healings and God showed up and showed off. I never did my message. So that's you, going in the groove. You lost your move, Mama Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so letting go of the move and going into the groove. And, you know, that's just where you can do that all day long. Like you said, it's powerful. Yeah, and I know that, like, one of the things, you know, when I get into the actual teachings that I do, in a sense, when I speak, I develop this thing I call, I call groove theory. And I, I basically, I believe, I just believe it's crucial for all people to step into who they're designed to be and then bring that authentic expression. Say all people into or all people? <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it's crucial for all, all, all people, people. All, okay. not just all, all people. Not all people, so all, all people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to step into who they're designed to be and then bring that expression, that authentic expression, into the context of the circle, which is the context of community, relationships, the greater collective. And, um, and in that, you, it starts off with the idea that you first discover what I call discovering the groove mindset, which is just, again, that you start building this awareness because you go from Chad to something interesting. Sometimes you can know something, and I say you go from knowing to believing to grooving, which is, you know, a lot of times we know stuff. We know better. We know better, but we just still don't do better. We still – we go, why am I still doing that? It's because we don't believe it yet. We, we know it, but we don't believe it yet, that you have to get to the believing. And then you have to get to the living it or the grooving it where you then walk it out. And so I, I have this process where after you get started to discover the groove, then you get into what I call the foundations of freestyle. Again, related to analogies, these analogies I take from street dance culture, but they relate to life. And the freestyle ability is really taking the groove mindset into your actual regular life like as you are living like right now you just said you're speaking last night and you're going okay what's happening right now i i'm going to prepare i still must my free my freestyle and when i say freestyle i mean freestyle meaning freedom and style meaning you so it's you authentically there in the picture that's freestyle but then you have to be ready you still have to train there's still training it's, it's foundation is connected to freestyle there's no freedom without foundation so I speak about that too as well. Ooh, so I like can you that. Dance. Say that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no freestyle, is, freestyle is connected to foundation. If I have no, if it's freedom for freedom's sake, that's chaos, right? I'm just roaming around. I'm going to punch the computer. I'm going to throw water. I'm gonna, you know, you know you do. <laughs> yeah. But if I know that the freedom is connected to the foundation, what's the foundation? Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? What do I represent? What do I believe? That's what the freedom is from. So if I'm with my son and I'm riding a bike with him down the street, because there's dotted lines on the street, I'm free to roam between them. But if there's no lines, I'm just swerving around, floating in space. There's a connection to something real. In the dance world, if I'm dancing, I want to I have a firm base, but I leave that. I don't want to build my foundation around me, right? Because then I can't move. Right, that's almost a religious idea, right? In a sense, right? You, yeah. you want to have your faith, you want to have it's a room. Stuck. If you build it down, yeah. you're stuck. You want to build a foundation, but leave that layer of sand so I can glide across it. So when I, I can, and I can, if I leap up, I land back on it, and I'm still free, but I'm connected. And I, I sorry, I was something that Chad said, by the way, I'm Canadian, so I'll say sorry sometimes. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive you for that, yeah. But when uh, something that Chad said, I wanted to share, um just really I thought was specific to the topic was so years ago um, I was working with this artist. I was, I was dancing as a lead with this artist and 
Um, and I've done it a couple of years. We've been in Japan and overseas and in America, of course. And a couple of years in, the manager approached me and said, Bradley, would you like to choreograph for her? And I said, absolutely. I would love it. Um, and I remember usually what happens at the time is the manager then calls my agent and they set up a deal and they work it all out and they send me the music and I go to my studio and I get some dancers. I put a few things together. I present some work with the team. You know, it's, that's the very normal process. Well, in this case, this woman, it was a great lesson for me. She just said, okay, great. She sat down in a chair. She called the artist in on another chair. I'm standing here. No one else in the room. They went over to the stereo, put on the music. I'd never heard it before, brand new music. And she said, what do you got? And I was like, what? I got nothing. <laughs> Start <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I got nothing. And it was weird because I was aware of what I believe. It's not the move, it's the groove. That I'm, I'm, that I'm, the groove is not there to, re- to tell you you're connected. It's to remind you you already are connected. You're already connected to everything that's there. It's presented in front of you if you, if you receive and take it in, right? So I had to tell myself this, but at the same time, I was fighting the mental game of yes. the movement. I was sitting there going like, oh my gosh. And I was going, what does she want to see? Does she want it to be like angular or just grooving? Does she want it to be serious or, or, you know, I was thinking, what does she want? What does she want? What does she want? How should, you know, what is she hoping for? Should I smile? Should I be serious? Like all the crazy stuff was yeah. all this idea. I what tell you, our heads could, can get us into so much mess, but, can it? Yeah. And it was the longest three minutes of my life because finally it was three minutes. I will roughly, I remember looking at the clock because I was so aware of sweating in that. And I finally <laughs> had to say, Oh my gosh, I'm here. I'm here for a reason. I've, I've got stuff I brought here, but now I'm in this moment. I trust that I'm here. I'm trusting this groove. And I just started to groove. Now still, she made me wait about another two excruciating minutes. But finally, then the artist said, oh, I like that. And then another minute later, she came and stood beside me and we started just grooving together. And then I worked for her for like four years. And so it's, but what's interesting is I've watched this again and again, and what, you know, we all learn. Even as I say this to you, I, I'm, I don't have a perfect, I still have days where I go, man, but I have to go, wait a minute. Why is it that if I'm in a, watching people in a circle, and I, again, I use this figuratively, but it's almost like life-wise, because a circle represents any time you have a new job, a new position, uh, you're, you, maybe you're adopted into a new family, a, 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 a presentation you have to make. Okay, so it represents that time when that focus is there, all that energy is there, and it's waiting for someone to step in. But when you step in, it says, who are you? What do you have to offer? What, 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 what do you have to say? What, you know, who are you? And you have to remember that you always have something to offer. That's the secret. You always have something to offer because you've been given much. You have much to offer <laughs> at all times, at all times. And so what is amazes me, and, I, and I've watched it myself, you know, for both of you, we'll be at an event, right? And I'll put it in the context of a dance thing. You go to a wedding, let's say, and a dance happens. And not that you have to be able to dance, but even a song comes on. And you kind of feel you want to go in. <laughs> no, you do have to be able to dance. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but, but like it's a, I, I mean, let's say it's not a big competitive thing. It's just like the family gathering. It's a wedding. And you're like, you watch somebody go in. They're not a dancer. They're just like a, an uncle that's doing something. And we kind of look at them and... We laugh a little bit and we're happy for them doing what they do. They're maybe offbeat, whatever. But we don't give ourselves that same grace. We don't give ourselves the same grace that we have. We are connected to that same freedom that they have. And we have to realize that we are. Like if they you fell on know, the ground. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's why please. we enjoy watching children so much because they're just so yeah. free to be who they are. And then as we get older, we lose that and we get so stuck and stationary and we lose our groove using your kind of words and to come back to that is what you're advocating here. And, and it's such a powerful truth that it's hard to undo all of the learning that we've had to put ourselves in these boxes. Yep. Yeah. And I actually think that I, I do, when I do activation sessions with my, the groups that I work with or teams, um, I, I'll get them on their feet. And again, they don't have to be dancers at all. A lot of time I'm working with people that are just, you know, artists or regular uh, uh, housewives, uh, homeowners, business people. But I still get them on their feet and do some things physical to get it to kind of get into resonate with them. And one of the exercises I do, 
Um, I get people just moving side to side, and it does, I don't care how they move side to side, as long whether they got three left feet or whatever they got. There, there's chat, so I get them moving side to side, and and as they go side to side, I do this for quite a while. I get them sort of standing, rocking side to side. I say, look, you know this from high school. You got a two step, or from being in the church <laughs> choir, you got some way you know how to go side to side. In the and, church uh, world, and years ago, they used to call it the Pentecostal two step. So we yeah, that's, that's, good at that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so as they go side to side, I'm like, look, what happens after doing this for a while is a lot of people will, will then I see in their heads, they're thinking, well, what's next? Bradley, yeah. what, what's next? That's what I was thinking right there. What's next? Right? What's next? <laughs> and the thing I'll say is, hey, listen, this is it. The thing that's the part of the process is understanding that the groove is the dance. It's mm-hmm. when you start to, if you start to commit to this side to side and not think of it as a holding pattern, then you start to dip one side and then you start to maybe look around a little more and then you start to maybe scroll a little further this time. And then you start to realize this actual simple motion, you can move this all day long. And by being aware of how you're feeling, sensing how your feet feel and your hips, maybe your hips are hurting. I don't know your knees are giving out, <laughs> but as you go, you start to go, Oh, I, I'm now, connect, I'm now moving. And the goal is to stop thinking. Yeah. Not, not again, we, we're very, it's very important. Of course, we know that as a man thinks so he is like, we don't, we don't let go of holding captive what we think about, but to stop thinking about all the things that weighed us down mm-hmm. in the process of the moment when we're to be like, now we've, the thinking's been done. We've done our preparation. We're here now. So now just trust we're here and that you're going to be led, guided, hearing what to do. And you'll find that you're just free and put that into your life. That even though you can't walk into every meeting doing this, well, maybe I can, but <laughs> you can. <laughs> but, you know, but we but, can go into the can. restroom or something, the bathroom before our meeting, but, and we can groove out a little bit just to relax and then go into the meeting. But Brandy, that's so important. It's like how you've taken that and made that like something that helps you overcome all these doubts and unbeliefs. It's like these negative voices that are in your head. You just put your little groove on. Yeah, it's like... um when I think about even the, the, again, taking that circle concept to enter the circle, cause I I'll do this exercise where I have people scattered around the room. Um, and I have, I'll put on again, not to competitively dance, but I'll put on something that's just a general song. And they're just kind of at a, you know, at a social gathering moving and they're all having a good time. I say, just let loose, have fun. Okay, great. Okay. Let's quickly make a circle. Someone come in the center and do what you just did. Well, everybody just freezes. Like, <laughs> dear, no. Spotlight. And go, <laughs> and so I ask, what, what is it? What is it? What is different? Now, obviously, it is different, right? I do believe that that shape of a circle is so specifically created. It creates and, re- and represents immediately fam- immediate family, community, relationship, team building. It really is a representation of the larger, I think. And that's the purpose that eventually you realize your groove, you become aware of the groove. The freestyle of the groove is your personal journey, but the ultimate goal of it is not just for you. It's not about you. It's to take it into the center and release that to everybody else. Release your freedom, release your gift, release release your inspiration so that others feel, because you know when someone's free, you feel free. If someone does is free to do this, then you're, you feel, okay, I can do this. Um, um, I guess it works negatively too. If someone starts going through the red light, every starts going through the red light. <laughs> <laughs> you know that thing with people, you know, you go to a place and people start trying to find a place to park and they can't. So they start parking like illegally and then everybody just starts parking illegally. So it's like that herd mentality. Everyone just follows, right? Yeah. But, but the freedom that's released, if you're, again, that's connected to maybe the wrong foundation. But it's just the idea that you you really, if you're on the edge, it's almost like the side-to-side drill I just sort of was talking about. When I'm on the edge of the circle and I want to enter, and this, again, if I want to speak, I want to dance, I want to present something new, I want to create, uh, I'm just working on something at home, whatever it is, I go, okay, for what am I feeling right now? What is the groove speaking to me? Maybe I'm just calm and quiet. If it was musically driven, maybe I'm doing this or maybe I'm bobbing my head. Well, to go into the center, I don't change. If I'm doing, let's say, just so you can see in the, in the, in the camera, if I'm doing this kind of motion here, this is my groove. Well, to enter the circle, I don't stop and then dive into a front roll and a back tuck and try and do something new. I don't have to make a grand gesture. What I have to offer is enough. Now, if you like to flip, that's fine. But if I'm doing this, 
then I just keep doing this as I walk into the center. And as I walk in the center, I'm breathing. Now I'm aware the beautiful thing about a circle, it makes you look around the room. There's a different energy. I totally believe that. But you realize you're there. You didn't die. You didn't pass out. Your legs didn't. Hopefully. That's the hope. <laughs> the beautiful thing is that, yes, there is something going on there. And then you have to realize the circle, the two enemies of the going in the circle. One is the pride issue. If you go in there feeling like, hey, I, my, my, I am so slick. I got this all down. You may even do something cool in the center, but it doesn't stick. No, it won't or resonate, resonate, yeah. It won't activate the heart. It just doesn't. And if you come in the other way where you're bringing your baggage of self-defeat and the worst one is comparison, you know, I know, and again, as an analogy of life, I, when I was first in the dance circles in LA and I came to Los Angeles and I, I had done some stuff in Canada and I got here and I remember going to this club on Sunset Strip. I walked in that circle and there were the legends, but they really were there. The people I had heard about now were there. And I remember dancing and going, oh my gosh, he's here. And oh, he likes this stuff. And it was, <laughs> that, and it was like in that context, I just shrunk and it was devastating. Yeah. I went home just like demoralized and I, and I wasn't cluing into what was happening. And that helped me to go through this process to realize I want to lift people out of this. I was demoralized because I walked in forgetting that I have something to offer. All, I, all they want is Judy and Chad. That's they don't want. They want to somebody. see you. Yeah. Yep. That's all they want because they're waiting to see. I, I, I've held a lot of auditions because I've worked in all parts of the industry. And we put these comments. We'll say, looking for, you know, uh, healthy guys that uh, like sports or whatever. We, we put a comment in there to, for the audition. We don't really know. We have to write some kind of description. We don't know. And you watch the people coming to the audition. They're thinking, what does he want? Just like I gave the example earlier. What do I want? They the more that's not how it works we don't really know we just know when we see it and usually when we see it is because someone is comfortable they're authentic and they're themselves now if they fit the role type if they don't that's a different story but if they fit it then we're like oh and we can't describe it but it's because they are they totally understand that they are who they are and and in terms of speaking to the the, the audience out there we know a lot of this stuff right in, in, mm-hmm. what, in our walk, we know a lot of this, but we haven't worked on out. going to from knowing to believing mm-hmm. and, and, and into grooving and into living it. It's, it's really a thing where the one thing we've been given, if you think about things we're able to control, we can't control much. We really can't control much. We can't control how long we live. That's for sure. <laughs> but we can control what we think about. Yes, we it's can. Kind of, right? That's one thing we can control with our thoughts. You know, I love the, uh, the idea of, you know, think of what is trustworthy, what is noble, what is lovely, what is pure. I, it's one of my favorite verses, the idea of where do, you, where do you put your thoughts? Don't even think about those things. Well, it's, I think if you look at it over and over again, the direction is what are you thinking about yourself? And if you don't speak it over yourself, it, it won't go from knowing to believing. It will just get stuck in the knowing. And you can practice this. I say this phrase. Who you are spontaneously is who you've spent the most time practicing to become. Oh, I love that. Who you are spontaneously is who you've spent the most time practicing to become. It doesn't just happen. Even if you discover the groove, you have to dig in and keep speaking that, walking it out, going from what I call training to trust. You try things, you, you train in things, you trust it and try. The street dance culture, the reason why I have the groove theory, the process of going from the groove to the freestyle to get in the circle, is that the culture is built around the process of that as soon as you learn how to do something, you got to try it in the circle. It's just the way the culture is made. You're, you're, you're not allowed time to sit in the corner and work out every detail. You have to try it. Okay, I better know how to pop. I don't care. Get in the circle and challenge that guy or dance with that guy. It's just the way it goes. So you, you, you're, you're raised up in this idea of, oh my gosh, I've got to just find out who I am right away. And, and it's a great aspect that I pass on to people to the way that I share uh, my process with people. I think that's so powerful. It goes back to there's freedom in the foundation. Yes. And to establish that foundation, the deeper your foundation is, the quicker the walls can go up and the edifice can be seen by everyone, right? 
They yeah. don't see all the work that was done in the foundation because that's an unseen work by the public, if you will, for the most part. And yeah, when I mean, we're putting in all of our practice and all of our doing and repetitive things that are boring, really, in a lot of ways, and they're tedious and they're hard, but they pay off such rich dividends later because then if we will then trust intrinsically who God has made us to be, if we've done the work, then we can get into the groove like what you're saying. Yeah, I think, I mean, I ask myself on a regular basis, I'll be in somewhere, I'll go, am I free right now? Am I free? Am I freestyling right now? And, and again, it doesn't mean also you become just disrespectful. And, and I, you, we've talked about that earlier, but free in that, am I trying right now to be something that I think they want? Am I recognizing that what I have is valuable? And it's, and it's where it's at right now. And this is what I'm offering and what I have to offer. I always have something to offer. What move am I stuck in? I'll ask people in my workshops, what, I like that. Yeah. What, what move are you stuck in, in your life? What area, what, what, what part of the record is skipping in your life and needs to get back in the groove? Like I remember my father, he used to, when my father wasn't talking about medicine, he played jazz music. He loved jazz. He was, he actually had the second largest jazz collection in all of Canada. And he would drag us to jazz, you know, <laughs> events all the time. And but you was, know what? Even in that, he was putting the groove in you, and he didn't know oh, it. He was preparing so you for your future, and he didn't he realize crazy. it. He would sit there and play record after record, and he would tell me about every instrument and every artist. But I realized those instruments and artists were moves. It was the groove that united the artist instrument into this beautiful melody that made my dad just start to weep and cry. I mean, it wasn't the, the actual individual moments. And if you continue to think in terms of a move mindset, then you're, you just, you get more and more moves in your life, more moves, more layers that are just covering up your authenticity and robbing you of freedom. And so you've got to understand over and over again, are you free? Are you realizing that you have something to offer? Are you comparing yourself? Things that, things that are, that are kind of, we know these things, but you have to continually on a regular basis, and I think speak affirmingly over yourself yes. with the wisdom you've been yes. given. And, and that's how we overcome that doubt and unbelief, you know, that we're less than or we're not going to measure up or we don't have what it takes or whatever, whatever. It's just to surrender to that groove, you know, and trust that you've done your homework. And if you haven't felt fully accomplished in it, just trust that God's got you and yeah. he'll groove with you in the moment and carry you through where you can't. So and I, and I think yeah. also it's, it's also, um, it's amazing to me. I watch how in a, in a lot of ways, the actual groove itself, having a groove the the, the healing that it has, because you're, you're, yes. re, you're again, you're not, you're being reminded you're connected to all that you know that is offered to you from what god has for you you're, you're just reminded yeah you know you know that you are connected you're not you feel distant but you know you're not because it's it's there's different ways that it reacts to you and i remember just my mother um uh, she's older now but my, my mother was actually a, a beauty queen and she was a dancer when she was younger and um but now sometimes when she comes to visit she'll be like oh my knee hurts or my my throat's bothering me or whatever or, or my friends uh uh they're they have problems that they're getting older now and, you know, she's be concerned. It happens. And I'll, she, <laughs> she'll talk about this stuff and I'll see this weight kind of over her. And then this time she was here last, we were sitting here, we put on uh, some music and we just listened to music sitting there with my, my other friends, good friends of ours that know my mom. And next thing my mother comes in from the back room and she's like, just, oh, she's sweet. grooving. And he's I'm like, what, yeah. what just happened? Like, Two seconds ago, she was weighted down. She was thinking about her throat. She was thinking about her friends. And now it's an amazing thing, right? I, I have some extreme examples. It's, an, it's sort of another side topic. But I have, through the dance world, through the actual physicality of the groove, I've seen incredi the, the, of the incredible actual healing properties in the idea of being connected to the groove. Like things That's that right. doctors say you're never going to make it. There's That's no right. way you're not walking right. again. You're toast. And next thing you know, they're just doing it. And they have this desire. I have a friend that had a brain tumor removed 
and all the neurological problems and what he's been doing as he connects to the groove and he just keeps fighting back. And when he's in that groove, it's like he's back, you know, before the operation. And then all of a sudden you see the weight come back again and the concerns of the world come back again. So it's how we choose to see, I say, choose the groove as I speak to people in sort of a general public idea and yes. say, choose this group, understand there's something larger and eternal there that's for you. There's something that's you are right. connected to that's, that goes beyond what you can imagine. And as you do that, you'll just, you lift up and there's a different aspect in terms of, again, don't make in those mountains out of the moves. That's so true, Bradley, because when we are weighted down with the cares of this world, I mean, Jesus said he wanted to carry those for us, right? Cause he wants us to be able to live in the group. So yeah, when we realize that we're weighted down, that's the time where we can get the privilege of making the decision to pivot and cast those cares on him and move into the groove and have that freedom to live life out joyfully, <laughs> like what he designed it's, us to live. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, when I think about it, my parents were, were wonderful, but I didn't grow up in a, a home that was steering me towards, uh, you know, um, a group like mindset. Looking, <laughs> yeah, it was more like just the you know it was a little bit. Uh, we, we live in a great place, but it's kind of like figure it out. You know, you you're gonna you know hang with your friends and whatever. And so I had a lot of holes, as I shared earlier. Of uh, I knew how to you know get good grades. I was a good student. I knew how to work hard for the team. I knew how to uh, you know distract and have fun. But but for building relationships and knowing who I was, and I I had no, I had no idea. Um, I was kind of expected to figure it out like with the rest of us. And I think there's such an opportunity with my children, you know, my wife and I, we have, ch we have kids and I have kids and just raising them to know that at the whole time that they are connected, that they don't have to be looking outside of that and they can ask those questions and question it, question the group, but don't doubt the group. Mm -hmm. um, don't doubt that it's there. Like I think, I mean, we, we have our doubts, I guess, but I always work to say, I question, I struggle, but I'm not going to doubt it. I know it's there because I just have to walk outside and go, yeah, it's there. I, I, I may not feel I'm close, but that's just my mind telling me some lie. It is there. It's never gone anywhere. I'm going to not doubt that. I will question and speak and whatever, but I'm not going to lose that. And it's, it's just a powerful moment. Uh, and I, I, I want to share this one thing. I, I love how the groove comes to you in different places, different aspects to sort of speak into your heart. And, 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 and really, you know, to me, it's God saying, I know who you are. Yes. And I remember years later, this is uh, just recent, well, about five years ago, I was at a conference. So, you know, I was going to be a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, my whole lineage of doctors. Uh, and I went on this whole other path. Um, and I'm very grateful, very thankful for it. But I remember I was at this conference. It was actually a, a, a scientist, a, a doctor. He was speaking on, um, uh, his name was Dr. Stephen Meyer. He was speaking about cre uh, fossil records and creation and, and sort of debating certain things. It was an incredible talk. So I went to hear a dissertation. He spoke for an hour. And afterwards, he had this, he had this half hour um, sort of follow through on, you know, ask people if they want to ask questions. And as, as he did that, um, I put up my hand and I got in line and I went up there and I asked this question and I don't remember what I said exactly, but as I spoke to him, he says in front of the audience, he goes, are you an engineer? And I go, what? I go, no. He goes, are you an engineer? I go, no. He goes, are you sure? And I go, yeah. And he goes, cause that's an engineer's question. That comes from the engineering mind. And I'm sitting there listening to this. Well, as he began to then now answer my question, I don't hear anything. I'm like just, and I flash back to my university years. And I remembered, I like sciences. I like them a lot, but I loved math. I loved every kind of math. And I'm sitting there as he's talking in this 15 second blur going, oh my gosh, engineering. I was supposed to be an engineer. What well, I, why didn't I, I didn't even, and I started thinking, I remember like when I was a kid, you know, doctors were cool, engineers were nerds, it wasn't cool to be an engineer, yeah. and I just, and I just was like, maybe if I would have been an engineer, then I would have been, my heart would have been grabbed like it did with this dance, and maybe that's when I would have got that, and then I could have given my dad the diploma he wanted, and I, and I had this whole thing, right, and I sat back, and I had that moment to kind of regret, and kind of go, wow, and then I went, no, I've just been told who I am, that's all. 
and I call myself an, I'm a movement engineer. And I, and I, 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 I mm. yeah, and, and, and I'm a doctor of the groove and I, and, I not, and not these labels to define me that that's what I hold on to, but just to receive who I've come. And in that, my father then said to me when he was, my father passed away and before he passed away, he said to me, son, I realized when you, when you walked away from what you did, you weren't rejecting me. You were following the groove and you may not have become a doctor but you still help heal people. I mean, that's so, so profound. I think we got to sit in that a minute because sometimes I, when we don't pause to reflect on what you just said, then we lose that thought. But no, I think right. when people can help us to redefine, like when I was young, yeah. I felt uh, God called me to be a missionary nurse. In my definition at that age of what I thought that was, by the time I got married and had kids, I thought, well, that's totally gone, not going to happen. Yeah. But I see in the work that I do today, I'm totally that, but not defined in the way that my previous definition would have been and in the same way what you're sharing. So for our listeners today, sometimes we feel we've been put in a box because we've been defined a certain kind of way. But if we'll yeah. really let God kind of open that up to us, we can probably see that the diversity of expression that he had is so much different than maybe what we had perceived and it could be keeping us stuck. So you know, be it's, open it's, it's to absolutely. letting that be redefined. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I think a move mindset, as I would call it, has you sometimes holding on to an expectation so tightly in a certain way that we just don't realize we got what we asked for. It just came in a different form. That's so different. true. I love that. That's so true. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I went back and I started looking up what engineer synonyms of engineer, and it said designer, architect. Like I started, ta- I went, oh, this is what I do. Yeah. So these terms made in the world. I went, I whether you know a degree or not, I'm living this life that is, is yes. just abundant, loving it. I'm working and choreographing life in a sense for people. Yes, you are. Yeah, and. and, and I, and I get to exp- express now, and I'm aware of that I'm expressing in an engineering way, in a healing way, but because it's coming from a source that I believe in, not me, um, and uh, and that I'm connected to. And because if I release it, you'll be you'll sense it, you'll be re-energized, reminded, reconnected, um, and really, the biggest thing is knowing that when you get into these circles, I say to people, take every opportunity to get in the circle. Like circles of life, whether it's you, things that you usually show up because you know, you go, why am I afraid of this? Sometimes that's what you have to kind of go get in that circle. And you realize it's just perception versus reality. Yes, being in the center is different. There's a focus, there's an energy. But when you choose to realize, I'm excited. It's not nervous. I'm excited. There's something beautiful there. Yes, it's going to be a little bit different. I have to now because I'm going to trust, because I've been practicing to be spontaneous, I'm going to trust that there'll be moments where I don't know what's happening now for the first next 15 yeah. seconds. The silence is okay. Oh, okay, wait, what'd she say? Okay. Da, da. Yeah. And actually, what I, as a creative process, which is life process, yes. when I work with creatives, which is the same as work with everybody's creative, we're all creative yes, because we, we are creative. Yes, we are, yeah. So I, when I work with people, the more that I can get the, the ball rolling, yes, and let people be who they are. Then we just start to bounce yeah. because you're now f- focused. I go, okay, the show's got to look like this or my presentation must be like this. Yeah. Well, it may be fine. It may be good. Or if I go, well, maybe it could be like this. I'm thinking, and someone goes, you know, I'd like, and you go, whoa, now you still have to know your vision, but yeah. you allow these things to start to come in to sh- help you shape. And you will get, I believe, my experience with the Groovaloos, especially the Groovaloos, which, you know, we, we've just been able to accomplish so many things playing off Broadway, creating our own stage show after our own stories. Um, it, it was because that I allowed, and I, I just say I'm grateful that my mind allowed this and God allowed me to kind of think this way, that in the groove, I did not uh, restrict the people. If you came to a groove nights and the initial groove, groove rehearsals, you would think it was a, an insane asylum because – there was just chaos, and it's not bad, not negative chaos, but it's just I let the people express. They were purposeful they were, chaos. <laughs> yeah, they were at the top of the game. These people, yeah. when the groups were forming, were the 
epitome. They knew they were, if they were freestylers, they could get in that circle, not in a show off way, but just out of just ability and freedom. Yeah. They could just yeah. rip it up. Yeah. And if I allowed that, then I go, oh my gosh, I love that. Can you yes. put that over here? But if I said, just do what I say, then they'd give me this. But I, if I could let them go free, go, oh, I love that. Let's take that. Now make that travel like this. Yeah. Make that lap with, then I got yeah. all stuff. But if I tried to control it all, then then I would have lost that opportunity to what Absolutely. it possibly be. And there's yeah. a balance in that, of course, there's a time and place. But if you walk in knowing it doesn't have to be structured to the T, that's wrapping yourself in a foundation. The freestyle has to be on, you have to have a foundation here to go off of, not a foundation here. The yeah. freestyle part of it. That's so awesome. Wow, our time is just quickly yeah. gone by oh my goodness we're gonna to have to have you on again bradley because we are just in the groove here yes and our epic conqueror community i'm sure that you've enjoyed this episode yes. so much as we're Thank talking you. about overcoming doubt and unbelief by getting in the groove and i just really totally advocate for that there's so many things that will be in the show notes of how you could connect with bradley yes. so we invite you to do that when this episode drops we know that Every Monday and Friday, we have new episodes in our Epic awesome. Conqueror podcast. And so we look forward also to having many of you join us in our Epic Conquerors Facebook group, where we are able to dialogue about these uh, podcast episodes that we've had and just carry on the conversation. Awesome. So anyway, we just want to thank you, Bradley, so much for joining us today. This was absolutely epic. We always have a... Um, Epic Conqueror's Power Affirmation at the close of our episodes. And I thought oh. the one for today would be so appropriate is I am grooving with God. <laughs> so what we do is we do a drum roll. And then on the count of three, we all say that epic power affirmation, which will be oh, I am grooving with God. So let's awesome. do our drum roll on whatever table we've got present yeah. nearby. All of our Epic Conqueror community drum roll wherever you are on the count of three. One, two, three. Let's say it. I am grooving with God. I am grooving with God. I am grooving with God. Yeah. Best way to live life, I got to tell you. Keeps us young, keeps us free, keeps us unfettered from all the toxicity yeah. that's in the world when we just move into that groove that God has designed for each and every one of us. And keeps us con and keeps us connected, knowing we're connected to greatness. Yes. So, in that, when we say we're connected to the groove, we're connected to the light, the the greatness. We're reminded as amidst stuff happening. And wait, what am, what do I stand for? What am I connected to? Wait, in this moment, I don't need to go there. Let me remind people of this great thing we're doing. It's great. There's greatness there. Not a, right. not, not denying reality, but just going. Wait, there's another way to approach this. To look at this. Yeah. And. I, I, I really also, if, if people are interested to journey with me on the groove, uh, whether it's with workshops or invite me, inviting me in or getting involved with things, I, I have a free gift for people if they could join my mailing list, which is on my website. I know you're going to list yeah, all the information. Yeah, put all that there so they can really yeah. grab a hold of it. Yes. Absolutely. That's but fantastic. Thank you so much. I really, uh, I really appreciate this. It's great to meet new people. Um, just choose the groove. It's, it's not the class. move. That's it's right. It's the groove. It's the groove. All right. That's so awesome. Well, to our Epic Conqueror community, we're going to say ciao for now. And we'll catch you on the next episode as well. But dive into those show notes here and get all the goodies that Bradley has to offer there because it'll really help you move into your groove that God has purposed for your life. So ciao for now, everybody. Bye-bye. Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured.